Um, let's talk about um, demographics, I guess. I, you know, you, you offered some great uh, analysis, you know, as it relates to the, the great resignation and, and housing and, you know, just the topic in general and even on a global scale. So I guess bringing it back to housing, you know, if birth rates are and have been declining and immigration is restricted, how and why do we find ourselves in a housing shortage? And then how long before we find ourselves with a housing surplus? Well, we find ourselves in a housing shortage because um, we still have, have, you know, see, with 350 million people, even if our population is growing very slowly, um, 1% is still 3.5 million people. Um, so 1% is a lot in terms of just sheer numbers. And the fact is that right now we have a housing shortage of about 10 million units. So there's about 10 million units short of what people are demanding. So some people are just getting richer. They want to move from the shitty house they have or the bad apartment that they have into a nice, a nicer place. And then you do have some immigration and you have some baby. And those people are getting to the point where they want to leave their mother's basements and they want to go out and, and buy a place. And there's just not enough building happening. And how did we get to this situation? Simple, just didn't build enough. Why didn't we build enough? Simple, government regulations. Government didn't allow us to build enough. And, and the, the, the thing about the shortage of housing is it's not everywhere, right? Because people, let's say, are leaving Ohio. Um, so in Ohio, there's no uh, housing shortage, but people are moving to California. And in California, there is a housing shortage. And the housing shortage in California is, is two fun. One is it's the very low end. That's why they have so many uh, homeless people. So there's not enough housing at the very low end, and it's not, it's very expensive. So it's not, even the low end is not really low end. And there's not enough housing at the high end. That's all the engineers moving there. We're making well into the six figures and there's no housing. There just isn't anything. Um, so that is, and, and the reason there's no building in California is because of regulation, because they don't allow building because they just don't allow building. They don't allow building high in San Francisco. They don't allow building anywhere in, in many of the neighborhoods in, um, in the Bay Area. Um, they don't allow um, uh, dense housing. They don't won't increase den house density. So the suburbs have grown and grown and grown, but the commute becomes so horrific that, uh, and they won't expand the highways. So the highways are exactly the same as they were 20 years ago. They won't expand them because they want you to suffer driving your evil automobile into work because they don't want you there. They want you to leave. So everything is geared towards encouraging people to leave California because that's what the Greens want. Um, that's why we don't have enough housing. Now, if the population starts literally shrinking, that is, if uh, birth rates drop further and immigration squeezed even more, then once the 10 million shortage is made up, in a sense, you know, if there's building enough, at some point, uh, you know, at some point, there'll either be a surplus or there might not be a surplus. They might just be, it might just be matched, right? Because old houses go out of commission, they fall apart, they become decrepit. Uh, maybe the, the authorities will allow enough buildings to keep things at equilibrium. I don't know. The 10 million shortage is the entire U.S., but, it, but the shortage is focused in particular areas where the demand is high. It's again, there's no shortage in the Midwest. So it's the entire US. Well, it's it's the it's those places who have a shortage added up have 10 million. It's not net, right? So it's not the the shortage minus the surplus in places that um, you know where, 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 where people don't want to live. So somebody says in Denver, the shortage is 35,000. Yeah, I mean, Denver's grown very fast and I'm surprised there's a shortage in Denver, in Denver but it, it, it probably needs, the government probably doesn't give enough permits. And the other problem is, here's the other problem. To build homes, you need home builders and home builders need employees. 
And guess who your typical employee at a construction site is? An illegal immigrant. So when you restrict illegal immigration, you restrict the number of employees available to home builders, which restricts the number of homes home builders can build. So that's just another reason why. So, yeah, and, you know, I know you uh, have bemoaned the architecture and what's, the, what's going to happen with architecture, right, is, as the housing industry becomes more and more automated, the materials are going to be more and more standardized and you're just going to have more and more of the cookie cutter turning out of, of these, you know, standardized automated factories and, and well, uh, job sites. Yeah, I mean, it could be, but, um, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, designed some uh, cheap um, uh, homes that could be um, modular and could be produced in mass and that, 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 that have a better architecture. You can play around with the units so you can make them different rather than all the same. Um, but yes, part of, part of why you drive in Denver and Dallas or these places and you see all these McMansions and they're all exactly the same is because that's cheaper. It's much cheaper to build everything the same. It's, it's less architecture funds. It's just less thought has to be put into them. And, uh, and as you said, it's standardized manufacturing. So everything gets standardized. Right. I, as I, I worked in the industry and I know that, you know, working with automation vendors from, Europe is totally different than working with an automation vendor from America, just for the, the, the variances in, in materials and the standardization of the sizes there versus here, you know, it's a kitchen here is three times the size of a kitchen in in Europe. And, Absolutely. you know, the, the type of automation that we're talking about here is, you know, just that much different than, than what they're, they're used to. Yeah. But I don't think the automation is what, limits us architecturally. I, I think if you had real creative architects, they could use the standardized materials to create relatively cheap housing uh, that is more interesting and more varied and much and still big. You know, we, we value our space in the US, still big though, um, without giving up, you know, uh, uh, you know, look, Europe is also for the most part all the same, right? Um, uh, you, you go and you look at 19th century row houses, they're all the same. You know, there's not a lot of variation. Um, what I find is when you get to places that are wealthy enough to have single family homes, um, Americans choose, even though I think they can afford to, they choose to have very boring architecture. And, and that's unfortunate. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.